Hello there, this is Polar Bear 70 and welcome back to Sailwind, Episode 2. And from right now we will continue with the game. Um, if you remember from the previous episode, we had picked up, uh, we had started in the starting region here in Al Ankh, and we had picked up a cargo of coconuts and of rum that we then took to Gold Rock City. So with that, we have just arrived in Gold Rock City and uh, let's get started right there. So, um, so this is Gold Rock City um, and obviously named because of the gold found right in the rock right up there. Um, actually, that's the first time I actually noticed that. <laughs> so there you go. You learn something every single time you play this game. So uh, we have dropped off all of our stuff uh, at the guild, which is right there. Um, but let's go see the vendors. And Gold Rock City, being the capital, has um, a oops, has a lot of vendors. Uh, so we make the right. Well, let's go exploring just a little bit first. If we go right in here, oh, there's a guy who's selling paintings. Oh, check these. Oh, six thousand gold. Whoa, 22,000 gold. Whoa. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so, well, that's pretty cool. This looks like it goes to, like, a castle or something. Um, but the vendors are down here. And never mind the painter. Um, but the vendors are right through this archway. And if we come through here, there are a whole ton of vendors in here. Uh, starting from the beginning, we can get large tables if we want to. We can pick up grills. The stoves are 2,000 each. And with the stoves, you need firewood. So he sells crates of firewood. Uh, over here, we have tuna and sunspot fish. Uh, usually when you get fish in these crates, they're raw, though. They're not cooked. So this is all the, the fish cooking on the grills here. Uh, this vendor is selling grain um, and also bread. So that's pretty cool. Um, this, this vendor is also selling other fish and also coconuts, uh, dates, and then just selling the actual dates individually and lamb. Is he selling lamb? Nope. Okay. Uh, also on the outside over here, we have bottles of water and also containers of water, uh, the barrels of water. Uh, over here, this guy is selling more furniture. So we've got the, the big tables, the little chairs. We have one in our boat already. Um, and then beds. You can actually buy a bed for your boat for 2000 And then this guy also is selling stoves for 2000 uh, Then if I come around this side, this guy's selling cheese and uh, goat cheese. We have coconut wine. Uh, these are barrels of rum. And then right here we have the fishing poles that we talked about. We have the fishing hooks. We also have a container of fishing hooks for 60. Uh, we also have mugs. We also have brooms. We also have the lamp hooks and the lamps. Um, heading over here, we can pick up a map of... Um, we could just buy the Al Ankh map. We already have a copy, though. Um, for 500. We could also buy an ocean map. So if I pick this guy up just to look at it, this is what the ocean looks like. Right now we're, oh, I went to scroll down there to show you, but in, in the bottom left 
um, you can see there's the area of Al Ankh with Gold Rock City. To the direct east of us is Emerald Archipelago with the Dragon Cliffs as their main city. Um, to the north northeast of us is Aestrin, which has Fort Aestrin as their capital. Um, and then there's these other islands. There's Oasis north of Al Ankh. There's Newport north of Emerald Archipelago. There's Mount Malfic, which is southeast of Fort Aestrin in the Aestrin area. And then right smack in the middle, there's Happy Bay. Um, never been to any of those other places. We will try to get there in this game. Uh, we'll see what's what's happening with that. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put this back down because I can't afford to buy it. Then over here we also have a couple of um, navigational tools. So we have the compass for 120, but we've already got one. We have a chrono compass for 6,000. Now this thing is absolutely amazing, but we can't afford it yet. Um, basically it allows you to do lots of things. It's a compass. Um, it shows you what your latitude is. It potentially can tell you what your longitude is. Uh, can tell time of day, I think. There's a whole bunch of stuff it can do, but it's, of course, 6,000, so we kind of have to work our way up to that. There's something called a sun compass, which during um, noon with the sun directly overhead, it will tell us, it can tell us what our uh, latitude is. So that's kind of useful, but right now the one we really can afford is the quadrant and the quadrant um, is used to find a latitude by measuring the angle between the north star and the horizon um, we're not going to pick this up just yet because we don't really need latitude just yet um, i do a lot of stuff based upon um whoa <gasps> oh it's the end of the day See, the sun is setting, so the merchants are all putting their stuff away. Oh, what a bummer. Oh, well. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, when the sun sets, all of these vendors basically take their stuff in. And, and then they go home. And, you know, you can kind of see the, these, these people have all just left. So, with that in mind, let's, let's head out here, and we will go back into the guild, the Sailwind Trading Guild. So, this guy is always going to be here, um, and you'll notice that my screen just got a little fuzzy with, um, with like, uh, with the film grain. That basically means that I should check my... I should check my stats. And I'm getting kind of tired. I'm pretty thirsty. And I'm not so hungry. But pretty much I'm getting tired and I'm getting thirsty. So we're going to have to deal with that in just a little bit. But before we do that, let's take a look. And this is the advantage of being in the capital city of a region. Um, oh, how interesting. Normally they have quests that go out to other regions. Um, but they do not have it now, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. Anyway, so we can look at these. I'm probably not going to accept any. I will probably sleep... Uh, I will probably sleep the evening away in the boat. Um, eat and drink, sleep, and then we'll wake up tomorrow, maybe buy a bunch of things. Uh, we'll see. Now, this is interesting. This is a two-masted ship. Um, it's like the smaller ship, but two masts and very much larger. So let's take a look at this. You can't really see it in the, uh, in the nighttime, but... Oh, this actually has a hold. Whoa. Okay. Um, why don't we do this? Let me run over here. 
And I'll grab my lantern and we'll just explore this. We'll explore this boat. Somebody else's boat, but let's ooh, let's take a look at it. What is this? Oh, it's for sale. Oh my goodness. 12,500 gold is a little bit out of our budget right now, but certainly it is a uh, it is a goal. Uh, but let's take a look at this thing. So this thing has two masts. One, two. And so it's got two... Oh my gosh, look at that. That's the, uh, that's the anchor right there. Mooring lines. Um... Wow. This thing is incredibly large. Okay, so that's for the back sail. Uh, these are for the front sails? Yes. Okay, and then it's got this crazy cargo hold in here. There's your hammock. Wow, look at all this room. Oh my gosh, you know how much stuff I could carry with this ship? Wow. Okay, certainly something, uh, a goal to uh, reach. And with that, we better drink some some water um, and then think about heading to sleep. So, once again, we grab our cup and we drink the water. Okay, I'm going to put the cup away. I'm going to turn the light out and we will uh, jump over back to the hammock. We will sleep in the hammock. Um, and so, with that in mind, so we need 12,500. It's going to take quite a while to do that because most of the qu quests are 200, you know, between 100 and 200 gold, uh, depending upon where you go in the local area. I know that the, the larger quests, the quests that go across the ocean, are like 3,000. But that's going across an ocean. I mean, they give you like 30-something days to do it in. Which means you got to pack your ship full of... Um, I'm going to let it keep going. You have to pack your ship full of supplies and everything to make sure that you make it. Um, I'd like to get a fishing rod. And probably a crate of fishing hooks. Um... I, th I would feel safer with a crate of fishing hooks rather than just, you know, a bunch of fishing hooks kind of hanging around on the boat. So we may have to sell our chair. We're not really using it a whole bunch because I don't really store a whole bunch on the chair. Um, and right now you can't really sit on the chair, so I may actually sell that. So that's pretty good. I am going to eat. Oh, that sounds like a storm. Actually, that is a storm. You can look at the water, and you can see the, the, the waves sort of bouncing from the storm coming in. Storms in this game are pretty amazing, I have to say. First time I was in one, very scary, but very cool. Um, and you have to... You have to be careful with the storms because if you have your sail out completely, you can end up easily um, capsizing your, your boat. So let's grab a little bit of water. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to pick up my chair. And I am going to run to the vendors. I bet you the vendors are not out yet. Um, oh, wow, these two are still out. Uh, let's see. Can I sell to one of you guys? No. Okay. So I'm going to take my chair. And I'm gonna... Oops, I can't actually put it in my inventory. It's too big. 
that's brilliant. I've never actually tried to do that before. Um, and so I just, I think that that's brilliant. That they don't let you. Um, well, I guess otherwise you'd take your cargo and you'd stick it in your pocket. And that would be the end of that. But let's continue exploring. I haven't really explored a lot of this area yet. So, I think this is pretty interesting. This is a, um... This is like a cargo winch. Uh, like a, like a crane right here. And this almost looks like you'd launch boats out of here. So I wonder if maybe in the future there is going to be like a boat construction company here. That would be cool. Um, you know, the rest of this is just, is just people's houses. Um, that's what it looks like. I mean, it's very cool, all of the little details that, that were sort of put into the town. Like, here's a couple of build outbuildings and stuff, and uh, it's really pretty cool. Uh, I don't think you can make the ship come through here. That would be interesting if you could. Not going to try it, though, yet. Um, but let's head back this way. So, yeah, there's all these, like, cargo cranes over here. So, that's pretty neat. There's something that... Hmm, okay. If I come back over here... Oh, looks like all the vendors are back. So, let's see. Yeah, I can sell this for 150 So, let's do that. Now, to give you an idea, these chairs sell for 200 So, I got 150 back from it. Um, so with that in mind, let's grab a fishing rod. So I'm going to buy one of these. Now, thankfully, the fishing rod comes with a hook already attached, but I'm going to need more. So stick that guy there. We will buy the 40 fishing hooks, and we will put this on board our ship. It looks like the storm has passed. Let's not run into the... Okay, so let's see if I can do a little bit better and drop this right there. There we go. Perfect. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to take my fishing rod and I will just drop it right here. Oh! It quite literally just hung in the air. So let's drop it like that. Okay. All right, <clears throat> now let's cheat a little bit <clears throat> and let's see in what direction the wind is going. It looks like it's going to the southwest, so it's coming from the northeast. If I look at my map, thankfully there's nothing in the northeast. Um, everything is either south or west or northwest or southeast, but nothing northeast, which is pretty cool. So, I can pretty much take any quests in the local area. I will stick this back in my inventory, and let's go running. I have like eight goat cheeses left to eat, so we might actually pick up some, some food here too, if I still have... Oh, that was interesting. Look at that. That is an interesting bug. If, okay, so watch his, his upper arms, and if I look down here, they disappear. Some sort of weird clipping thing. Anyway, so let's take a look at this. Um, the goods to Al Milem, so that would be a, a western course, uh, slightly north, but mostly west. It's due in three days. It's two boxes of goods for 184. Coconuts to the Al Ankh, 194. Um, 
copper to the Alchemist Island. Rum. Goods to Neverdean. That's 151 for one. Uh, grain, 146 for one. Grain to Neverdean, 147. Um, that's 158 for one. So we, we kind of have to kind of have to think about this. Try to figure out where I want to go. Neverdin sounds really tempting because the wind is blowing towards the southwest, so we would get there very quickly. But we've already been there. Um, so let's look at Al Nilem. Um, so there's two rum for 168 and then one grain for 146. Um, that sounds pretty good. Let's do that one. So we'll accept this one and we will accept the rum and not the goods. Rum, goods. Oh, let's do goods for 184. Okay. So that's that. Here is all of our cargo. This uh, ginormous box is all the grain. Um, but the goods are right here, so let's pack these in first. We'll put these up front towards the bow. Um, and then the grain we'll put in the middle. Alright, so we'll find a nice spot for this right there. Okay. We'll run back. Uh, we'll head over here and drop this in here. Now, each of these islands is entirely different from the other. Um, I've been to every island at least once, but not much more than that. So it'll... It'll be interesting to discover the little intricacies about each island because I basically stopped and didn't really do a lot um, visiting them. So let's take this up a little bit. And we'll push this over to the right there, left side. Okay. We got all of our stuff. I've got 141 gold left, which is quite a bit. So, let's go hit the vendors just one more time. Oh, I do want to check what's down this alley. Oh, this is the back entrance to here. Okay. So, let's go here. I want to pick up some food just to have some food. Um, and... For the record... Um, I can't afford coconuts. I have, what, 141? I could buy dates. 141. I cannot buy fish. The so dates it is. So let's buy some dates. Um, and then we will we'll get underway. Um, anyway, the... Um, yeah, so uh, we picked up dates. I I don't know if it's if it's worth keeping the boxes after you're done with them. I think you can sell them back to vendors. So, like, if I finish eating all of my um, uh, this is going to be a nuisance. Let's drop this. Oh, uh, no, that's right on the. Let's drop this right there. Okay. Um, there is no way to, like, reuse this box for something else. So I can't actually stuff stuff in here yet. Um, I know that that's on the, uh, on the list of stuff that the developer wants to do. Um, and when I say developer, I mean one guy. Um, it's Raw Lion, 
Studios, and Rawline is basically the studio. He's the guy. Um, and holy cow, this game is amazing just for one person development. So kudos to Rawline. He's awesome. Um, so with that, let's see what we've got. Um, I got 25 gold left. I can stand to drink a little bit before we get underway, and then let's get underway. So one of the things that we're going to have to do is we have to head to the to the west, which is basically that direction. Uh, it's behind us. So when we leave, we're going to have to make a quick a quick turn. Um, we'll probably go out. I don't know that we can. We'll, we'll see if we can turn out of here that quickly, but. Before we do anything, we have to unmoor ourselves. The wind is still going in that direction. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I was like, am I moving down? The that was a weird optical illusion. It was the boat moving. Okay, so... Uh, with this in mind, let's open up our sail. Now, we're basically pointing into the wind, um, which is terrible. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to see if we can just, we're just getting a little bit of the sail, the wind in the sail right now. So I'm going to try to see if we can turn this boat. Now I'm going to set this just to, to, to rotate, and then as we go... I want to increase the, the sail amount so that we're picking up more and more of the wind. And then pretty soon what will happen is we'll pick up like most of the sail and then it's going to start getting, we're going to start going pretty fast. Okay, now I'm definitely going to want to take the wheel again because I don't want us to continue going and beaching over here. But that was actually a pretty cool turn right there. Let's spin this back. Oops. Still want to keep going this way. And we're off. Okay, now I don't think we need to sail out that much look up here. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think it actually needs to pivot. So what I'll do is I'll bring it back. This will pivot to the other side and then we will let it go. Um, sometimes that happens, uh, because we changed the direction, the side that the wind is blowing into, um, we had to, we had to swing the sail <clears throat> around to the other side. So, so now we are good to go. I'm just gonna maneuver our way out of here. We'll watch the city go by as we say goodbye to Gold Rock City. Uh, we'll be back for sure. Okay. Um, we are heading to the west, like pretty much to the west, slightly north. So once we get out of the, the channel here, we're going to need to swing a bit that way. I think our sail can probably stand to come back a little bit. Like that. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. We'll just hit F1. Oh, 
they fit adjust the sail. So it's probably a better angle. I wonder if it's that a ways? Yeah, probably. <clears throat> anyway, so we are going at a pretty decent clip here. I think we can really go any further angled. <clears throat> anyway, so thankfully the weather's nice again. Um, we are cruising along. Um, if you're not in the third person view and you're up at the front of the boat, you can usually hear and see the little splashes of the boat as it as it heads through the waves. So, Gold Rock City, very cool. Um, very, very neat and nifty. Um, it is the capital city. We will definitely be back here. Um, you can always see these islands from everywhere in this region. So, this is usually a good navigational uh, positioning um, tool, really. Um, now, right now, let's grab this and take a swing this way. If I look at my compass, I'm now heading directly to the northwest. It's not really what I want to do. I would like to head little more like that and let the, let the boat spin back. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. If I look at my map, that's pretty much the angle that we need to, to make in order to get to Al Nilem. Uh, so let's put that back. <clears throat> um, we do have a little bit of time, so we can actually rest for a little bit. Um, it's going to be a little while before we get to the island, and we are getting a little tired, so I'm going to take a little nap. Best to do it now, um, before we're close to our destination. If you get close to your destination, there's a possibility that you can run aground on the island. Or, and I did this once, you actually miss the island. You go past it and you have to go back for it. And that's really kind of annoying. So, let's not do that. Let's do the, let's do the right thing and rest on our way at the beginning of the trip. <clears throat> now that we've cleared the channel. So, here we are, and we should probably get up. Let's take a look. I think we stand to eat something. So, let's not eat our fishing hooks. Instead, let's eat some goat cheese. Okay, you will notice it is nighttime. There is the, um, the Gold Rock City Island group. So, let's come out here. And can I see the island from here? Not really. What I can see is all these wonderful stars. It really is gorgeous out here at night. Okay, so we um let's see how we're doing. Uh, just 
still we could still nap for a little bit more if we want to. Just want to check our sail, which is blowing pretty much in the same direction. This is our little weather vane here. Um, I'm willing to bet that we could probably stand to increase the angle just a little bit. Pretty good. I don't see the island on the horizon. Um, so I am actually going to go and take another nap. Okay. And hopefully, um, after we take the nap, uh, we'll be closer to the island. The uh, I'll be better rested. And maybe it will even be dawn, and that way it'll be easier to see whether there's an island out there or not. Um, right now we might still be too close to the Gold Rock City Islands in order to actually see them. And it looks like I'm going to sleep the whole... Yep. Okay. So now, let's take a look and see. Uh, I think it's right there. I think that's it. Um, it's kind of hard to tell in the nighttime. And so far, the seas are still. It's, it's a little windy, but it's not too, too bad. Um, okay, so we could stand to drink a little bit. Assuming that the weather holds and the wind continue blowing in this direction, chances are we will want to head back to Everdeen in our next quest our next quest just because the wind is blowing west and south and not really north. Um, we could go to the south and east, but I think ideally it would be the Neverdin route um, from here. If you look at the map, you will notice that there are two islands. Um, the Isle of Clear Mind and the Lion's Fang both of those do not have settlements on them. So you'll never get quests to go there. Um, they're just sort of there. They're nice navigational tools. Um, but you'll never get a quest to send anything there because there's basically nothing there. Um, Alchemist Island is a small settlement. The Al Ankh Academy is a very small settlement. Um, I don't remember Albacore Town too much. Uh, Al Milem is it's sort of an interesting settlement. I'll show you when we get there. Um, but yeah, but that's that's Al Ankh basically. Um, we can spend a lot of time in here um, doing navigational stuff and other things. Eventually. So we would like to move on to the other uh, archipelagos that are in the, the world. So, let me put that away. Um, how is our wind doing? So the wind is still pretty much blowing in the same direction. Uh, generally, like a broadside. Um, you'll, you'll notice that a lot of times the boat is tilting in that direction just because the wind is pushing the sail in that direction. Um, but it's still moving us forward, which is good. It's 
So, um, now yeah, let's try it out. So, let me turn the lamp on, I'm gonna pick up the fishing pole, and let's go fishing. Just because, hey, you know what? I got nothing better to do right now, so let's go fishing. Oh, it's already out there. Okay. So, basically, I, I use the, the the mouse wheel to move the reel. Um, so I can reel us in a little bit. I can't actually see where it is. It's probably behind the boat right now. Um, but you will know when you get a fish hooked because this this fishing rod is going to bend down and then that starts our getting the fish into the boat without it you know snapping off the fishing hook so we'll see what happens here fishy 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 And then, of course, when you catch fish, um, I don't have a grill, so I kind of have to eat them raw. Um, so I don't get as, as much calories from them. It'd be nice to get one of those spiffy grills, but they're like 3,000. So we're going to have to work up to that, too. I don't know that this little boat can make it across the ocean. I'm not sure I have enough storage space to do like 30 days. Whoa! Oh, looks like we got something. Yes, yes, we got we got a fish. So now what happens is we don't want the line to bend down too much. Um, but if the resistance on the line um, gets too lax, then the fish will start running away with the line. So, we have to keep the tension up and make sure that, um, but we, we want to make sure that we don't pull it too tight. And there's our fish. Now, once you get it up here, you can sight collect fish. Now, the first time I did this, I had it over the side like this, and I went collect fish, and it fell back into the ocean. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, and it looks like the fish took the... Uh, took, took the... the hook off the... off of the... Um, off the reel. So, this is a blue shimmer tail. I can just munch on it. It's like sushi, really, without the rice. Um, anyway, so now I have to put a new fishing hook in here. So I grab a fishing hook out of here. I click to attach it, and now it's attached. And I can pick this up and do it again. Now this might be the way to um, cross the ocean, is by, you know, fishing for your food, but Gosh, I don't know about that. That that that's kind of scary. Thinking that you have to depend upon your fishing skills in order to uh, to make it across the ocean. Maybe I don't know. We'll see what happens. I guess we could try it, and if we don't make it, then we'll start over again. I don't know. We'll see. Now I can let the line out. Um, but usually I like to bring the line in just a little bit so that I don't have to pull the fish in so, so far. Sometimes these fish are real fighters, um, and so it takes a while to get them back on board the ship. So we don't really want to do that. So, yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We got something. There he is. So now... As long as the line doesn't go too far down, as long as I'm keeping that resistance going, I'm pulling the fish in, 
But if it starts shaking like that, then that's too much tension. And what will happen is if if it if it's got too much tension at that point, it'll start shaking, and then the fish will just will throw the hook. So here we go. There's our fish. Right, so let's bring him in here. Let's drop him off. It looks like he took the hook again. Sometimes they um they do not take the hook off, but okay, and then I can eat this guy. And it's pretty good. Alright. So now the other thing that you'll notice is that we'll turn this lamp off because it looks like sunrise is coming up. And at this point, I'm going to stop right here. We're going to close this off as a video, and then we will pick it up from here again next time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.